Good day, everyone. This is Piney Fuels, and welcome to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and hear Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Terry Adwin. Hi, hi. Erin Ness. Hey, everybody. And Sans Winda. Hello. The entire team's here tonight. Yay! Yay! Then let us head into the game news, and we'll begin with just a note that there were another two Bulwer builds this week. So we had the originally planned build, then they had a few things that they wanted to fix with it that weren't quite there yet, so they had a second build later on in the week. They expect to have one more build next week. And then they'll decide when it's ready for release. Right now, the estimates are either late next week or more likely the week after that. We will have to see. But that means the clock is ticking towards update 23. Yay! Woo. Dragons! Dragons! <laughs> dragons! <laughs> dragons. <laughs> dragons, yes. Well, what about dragons? <laughs> so, there weren't anything that was mainly fixing the bugs from previous rounds and trying to do more adjustments to the various stat changes and the like. And in fact, that's something that's going to be. Probably the next build, too. A few more stat changes. And apparently they found that there has been a long-standing bug with scaling of legendary items. In you don't say. Uh, well, <laughs> they finally found the code where it was happening. Interesting. <laughs> so we'll have to see whether or not... That helps in any way for any of the future build. I don't know if that's going to get into the next build or not. I'm hoping that's the reason for the extra build is that they're finally going to get that in and hopefully it'll help to calm things down a little bit. We'll have to see there, but they're also planning to do a couple of tweaks to the mob values because they, they were, I think there's still some that they think might be a little bit off from where they really want them to be. And hopefully that would be a good enough build that they'll say, we're ready. We'll find out. So let's head into the Lotro Beacon. Where they are calling all bards, the Minstrel Guild of Breed invites you to sign up for the second annual Brandywine Pumpkin. Actually, when is that before I? It'd be nice if they could put the... Oh, October 13th. Yes. October 13th. Saturday, October 13th. So that would be two weeks from this recording. But the cutoff date for band signups is Friday, September 21st. Like before it hit the beacon. Before it hit the beacon. So therefore, signing up for it is probably not a real option right now. But... Anytime you have a music festival, they do love having audiences there. Yep. And that's going to be a multi-band event on the Brandywine server. And they expect that to go for about eight hours. So they're going to try to have sort of an autumn weather stock, I guess, is what they're trying for. I guess. I guess we'll we'll see how that goes. Then Fibro Jedi continues the adventures of Kyle Theron in his newest edition of Lotro Fan Fiction, where you could read a Parting of Ways. And Corsair and Kinship will have a public celebration of their f Oh, they just had that already. Yeah, that was today. Yeah, that was today. So holding a public celebration on the same day as Corey Olson's marathon. Is <laughs> I'm sure they were challenged with that on people wanting where to go. And our comment of the week. 
Wait, you skipped the Ken Hall. Oh, yes, the Ken Hall. Yes, okay. Crick LGBT is a new Ken and Crick Hall for LBG. LGBT players and allies get to know other players who are friendly social kinship. All's welcome. Send tell to Huxley and Vothay for more info. Now for our weekly comment. How'd you celebrate the Bagginses' birthday this year? I worked. I did the quest. I did the story quest. Yeah, I think I mentioned that last week during my, my highlights where I hit 11, level 11, level 111 on that quest. <laughs> That's how I celebrated it. I did the I quest the worked. day after. All right, uh, Arendus? I also worked. Oh. Then let's head to the fan site news then. A new Chickening Around comic has been posted, and you could view Harvest Time. These are always worth looking at. And Ending continues his adventures in Middle-earth with the legacy of the Necromancer. The legacy of the Necromancer? I haven't seen that one yet. Part two. Oh, so he's starting to... Let's try to go under golden leaves. All right. And yeah, he finished up Mordor, so he was heading into uh, into Mirkwood. Yeah, northern yeah. Mirkwood. All right, that makes sense. And you could join Druids Fire for Gondor has no Druids on a special Monday. Druids Fire has a lot of additions. It sounds like <laughs> if someone is absent on a stream. Druid's Fire is usually the one who volunteers to step in to, to hold depending, extra. Depending on the day. Depending on the day. Shout out to Druid's Fire. Yeah, and, which means she's going to have a long session next Friday because Corey will, Corey will be out next week. Because and at the same time, we have Cordovan, who's also going to be out next Friday. <laughs> and you could watch Epic Shenanigans with Tesla da Panda and Apulu. You could watch them for Be Bold, Be Wary. And Game Olio Dad. Completed part 139 of this series, Fadur. And you could watch Bards, Bagpipes, and Battles with Dung Glendower. And you could watch Midnight Madness with the Grey Wardens. Lots of streamers. Awesome. Lots yeah. Of... Schedule's pretty full for a Lotro stream. Yeah. And our screenshot of the week is getting us prepped for Halloween, it looks like. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. It's, pretty great. it's awesome. Yeah, I good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna scare you more? The tree or the hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> I say tree. <laughs> Let's go and see what's on sale this week. Uh, still not character slots. Oh, well, they, um, they need to get those on sale soon, especially yes, when update yes. 23 hits. Pretty please, guys. I'm hey. saving up, saving up my Lotra points. No, um, the next week will be the perfect week for it, too. Why? Because next week's sale, because that'll be just as tw update 23 hits and the. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the um, yes. Right, right. So the weekly coupon gets you max morale and power scroll times five with coupon max MPS scroll. 
now through October 4th and also through October 4th. You get 25% off virtues and virtue bundles, trait slots, and skill and slayer deed boosts. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Move along. Nothing to see there? No, nothing I would spend lotion points on, but if you aren't VIP, then the sale on trait slots is good. And Lotra Players News is brought to us by Harn Caker Games. And Which started Monday and have been streaming on the Lotra stream, and they're awesome. Yes. And wow, by the time this is posted on the podcast version, it will be over. You could still continue to watch the archives either on Twitch or on YouTube. Do we know what the score is right now? Well, I don't know. Well, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday I checked in and um, the Hobbits were ahead. Hold on, I'm checking. Let me see if I can find it. Then while she checks that out, we will head... Oh, the elf slipped into the lead. Ooh, the elf slipped into the lead. Ah. Then let's head into the new player question. And what's the question this week? We had somebody write into the website, I believe, with a question. Um, it was Tracy Height, and they asked, Is there a way to tell from your quest log whether or not a particular quest is locked inside an instance? And then they gave us context. I spent all weekend scouring the Lonelands, hunting for red maid side quests, finally gave up and Googled it, and found they're locked in a in the Garth Agarwin Arboretum instance. How was I supposed to know that? So the short answer is no. The quest log doesn't tell you. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, that the NPC flavor text will tell you when they first give you the quest. But then when you do the history on it, it doesn't show you like the full thing. I think. Um, It's been a while since... There aren't a lot of these floating around, actually. Um, Most of them have to do with the older in you're You're dropping out out. oh great there aren't very many of these around there are hang on discord's doing the thing oh no all right it looks like it decided to play nicely again um they're mostly connected to the older instances so I know the Great Barrow has side quests that you can get from quest givers before going into it. Um, Fornost is another one. And then Garth Garwin. And I think everything else. Um, maybe the rest. Carton Doom? Yep, Carton Doom. And the so other like, one near there? Um, or something? Or Garth. Yeah, so basically a lot of the old classic pre-50 Lotro instances will have some side quests. Although I can't remember if Heligrod has them or not. And they don't even really tell you. It's just the quest log will point to that area and you're supposed to kind of figure out, figure out from where the quest arrow is pointing that it's actually in the instance. Fornas was the one that gave me trouble with that. Yeah, especially so like, no. Go here to kill the stuff in Fornost, and it's like, but, 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 I can't get there. How do I get there? <laughs> in the chat, uh, Mary Rose says uh, they were on their first character taking the road to Erebor from Gandalf, and thought they had to get to the Misties and find the place. And they were at level 20. So level 20 going into the Misties did not go well. And then they later found out it was an instance. <laughs> so very yes. sorry. Yes, there's there's that too. Yeah. So therefore, let's just say there's... 
Occasionally, reading the te- quest text can help a lot. Occasionally, they're not exactly clear on that. I think even when you read the quest text, you're wondering, because I think they're almost as, is the quest text might have been written ten years ago, and yeah, maybe ten years ago it would have been understood. <laughs> Well, and sometimes they change things and then they don't change the quest text, like the uh, Bag of oh, Birthday yeah. quest. Oh, uh, yeah. They do have those things where things change. You're right. There are plenty of cases that where you're saying, why are they saying that? <laughs> I'm still baffled why every single hobbit who has a pie to go back to Holly Hornblower tells you where her house is. Because obviously if you're coming from her with instructions to get those pies back, you know where her house is. Why do they have to tell me where to where to go? <laughs> Never understood that. Yes. Every hobbit. Every hobbit. Every single one. Yes. It, which is really bad when you consider the one who is at the At the oven in Hobbiton. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Opal good body. Yeah. Yeah. Like I literally just came from her house with this pie and you want me to take it back and you think I need a reminder of where her house is? <laughs> oh, that was crazy, yes. Then anyone else have anyone have something to add to that? Then let's into our weekend lunch run. Terry Edwin, what were you up to? Well, um, speaking of Baggins's birthday, I led the girls in Middle Earth through the story gathering for Baggins's birthday. Um, because it had been a while since some of us had done it. And we read them out loud on stream. So here's an example of quests that change and quest text doesn't. Um, when you go to the gaffer, he still tells you that not all of the NPCs might will have a story for you at all times. So you need to keep checking back. And that's actually no longer the case because they changed it this year so that they're up all of the time. Which is so because, nice. Which is actually the reason why we did it on girls because we could, we knew that we wouldn't have to check back. We could just get them all done in the cluster and just take turns reading them. And it was a lot of fun. Um, Although we got to the child with the dragon and Kim just barely finished reading that one because she was laughing so hard. (laughs) That Um, was so awesome. The poor lonely mountain. The poor lonely (laughs) mountain. It needs a new dragon, but a nice one this time. Yeah. Um, and then Sans and I tour guided Pine Leaf through some of the landscape coming up in update 23 on Bull Roar. So when <laughs> Bull Roar updated Tuesday, we played on, did Lotro on Tuesday this week. So, um, it turns out Pine Leaf hadn't really done a whole lot of exploring. So we're like, Oh, we totally need to show you the dragon bone yards that are hanging, that are up in the gray mountains. So we did that and that was a lot of fun. And after we poked around at that for a little bit, since we weren't actually doing any questing on Borer because we're waiting for it to go live, uh, we went back to the live servers where actually Xing Xing is done with Moria for real this time. Yay! Woo-hoo! We did the uh, three-man instances for the mirror halls and the water wheels, and that was pretty entertaining. We were overleveled because we were like 62 and the instances are 58. Um, but still a little bit of a challenge, especially mirror halls. Cause I can never remember what the stupid mirrors need to be turned at. And I have to look it up every single time. Um, water wheels. I didn't really have to look at the guide all that much, but that was my week. Arindus, how was yours? Well, my week, I actually did stuff. So that's a first. <laughs> Um, I was working on the epic story in Moria on my main champ, who is around level 57 or so. Um, I believe it's volume two, book four ish, I believe. Nice. Um, and I got very lost. Um, like you do in Moria. Um, In Moria, it's what happens in Moria. (laughs) (laughs) Let's just say that this week was definitely a stable master appreciation week. (laughs) 
let's just leave it at that. Um, I got to the Flaming Deeps for the first time, and it was really neat. You know, there are some kind of hidden gems kind of in Moria, or not so hidden, I'm not exactly sure. But there are just some places in Moria that look really cool, and if, especially if you're not expecting it. Um, and this was one of those places for me. Um, I was, you know, just going along, doing the regular quest stuff, defeated a captain and felt pretty good about where my gear was. And then promptly fell into one of the boiling tar pits. Oops. And Ouch. I became very good friends with the rest circle. <laughs> no, I, it was one of those, I kind of knew that it was probably going to be one of those, you can't do anything to escape it. You just need to die. But I wanted to see if I could survive long enough to even see if there was an exit. So I'm popping off every heal that I had just to see. <laughs> um, so I had like the, the champion heal 3% of max morale heal going off. I was doing pots at this and I was running around or swimming around trying to see if there was an exit died and then hit the revive button. And so I revived in the same spot, kept going and <laughs> it was a mess. And I ended up meeting the rest circle anyway, but it was fun. Mario will be completed eventually. So Sanswinda, how was your week? My week was pretty good. Um, I ran some, Aaron's in Aeworth and then aggroed the landscape while on the field trip um, on my little Hobbit mini. And uh, it was only partially due to lag. I think the other part of it was due to being a mini on a war steed. Um, but it was pretty fun. We took out a lot of orcs and I only almost rode into the main orc camp near there uh, twice. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty good. And the one time that I did get too close and got all the archers mad at us. We got some pop-up quests, so that was nice. Um, and then I I fell a lot this week. Um, I fell off the ledges in mirror halls and water wheels on my dwarf champion. I fell into lava in the pits of Isengard on my hobbit hunter, who still maintains she was pushed. And I managed to fall off a bridge with guardrails on it in Lake Town on my high elf rune keeper, who is not happy <laughs> to be having a swim at that point in time. Yes, and I wasn't even on a horse. I was in the middle of the bridge, just minding my own business, walking across it, and suddenly I was in the water. Um, I mean, I was having lag problems, but I didn't think they were that bad. Um, and so then I got back onto the bridge and decided to try it and sure enough I could walk right up the guardrail and off the edge so <laughs> oops <laughs> so much for those so guardrails they look so nice I felt so safe seeing them but yeah it's still totally possible to ruin all those bridges um and that runekeeper also managed to die twice uh, today pursuing a memory cloth despite having friends to help her. She had two friends to help her the first time she died. She just happened to see the enemies while she was following the quest arrow on a war steed oh. and didn't stop before getting to the point, and so she was the first one into the ambush, and it did not go well. So then, <laughs> after being smoked back to life by cinders on her lovely uh, lore master, I... <laughs> entered the instance chasing the memory cloth with pine sap. Um, and I was really feeling pretty confident here. Like, there's two of us. I know what's coming. We've totally uh -oh. got this. I even changed to yellow line so I could kite if I needed to. Famous last words. Here we go. <laughs> First combat. And I was down. Um... I, I put down my healing stone and they all charged me and I tried to kite and finally yelled, stop running! And <laughs> I was dead. So, yeah, that was pretty much how that went. Yeah. And after that, um, I stayed quite a ways behind Pine's half and let the burglar <laughs> tank and uh, <laughs> didn't start healing until all the enemies had good dents in their... Um, <laughs> <laughs> their morale because it was pretty bad, but we got through. Um, Pine Pine Sap used his um, riddle to good to good advantage for us, um, but yeah, it was it was an adventurous 
time. Squishy Rune Keeper is definitely still squishy. Pineleaf, how's your week? Hey, we'll begin with my lore master, who was, of course, finally gaining revenge against the traitorous Falcon Clan for what they did to the Great Company. And decided to outdo what my burglar did last week. You remember my burglar last week who finally finished Enmity of the Spiders 1 in Moria? (laughs) (laughs) I finished Enmity of the Hillman 2 while fighting the Falcon Clan. Congratulations on finishing it. Nice. (laughs) I was like, okay, how in the world, especially going all the way through Ended White and then into Dunland, that it took me until I was fighting the Falcon Clan before I finished that deed. <laughs> well, weirdly, a lot of those enemies don't count as Hillmen, despite the fact that they are Hillmen. I always have. I thought that I was noticing me. that. Actually, because I thought that all Dunlandings were supposed to count. No. Not all Dunlandings count as Hillman. I mean, because I, my usual way of unlocking that deed is killing Gwilian at the end of Stormhold Methodist. <laughs> Hillman do. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird, all right. Because you have the same problem in Angmar, too, I've, no- I've discovered. Oh, not all the Hillman? Yeah, not all of your en- not all of your evil enemies in uh well the Angmen won't count because they're not Hillmen. Right. But some of the ones that you think are Hillmen aren't actually Hillmen. Hmm, I, I should have a look at that at some time, see if I could find any consistency in what decides it or if it's a toss of the die. Then on my Gladden Junior Warden, I decided to participate on the Friday night instances for Rangers of the West, and we're doing some Moria instances there. I was level 65, and I think that was, I think we had something like three of them who were relatively low level down in the 60s or below that, and we had three who were up in the 100s. So it was quite a range on there. The original plan was to do Heligrod, but as soon as we found out that the server was still having issues last night, because yesterday was the day when the servers, the login, log out server and the chat servers were acting up. So therefore, if you attempted to log out, you know, it wouldn't log you out. It'll just sit, sit you in limbo for the next 20 minutes until the server is finally decided to start running again. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, that was annoying. That was happening during the field trip also. So therefore, once you learn about this thing, we're trying to decide what we're going to do and what else to switch. I said, don't alt! <laughs> <laughs> Stay on your current character. That was the only thing that was working. <laughs> and then, during the field trip, all right, Sans Wind always already talked about this, and that is, of course, we're helping to defend Horn's homeland against the orcs and to decide, do we help the son or the mother <laughs> and all that fun stuff. So all that little stuff. And finally, we're getting around maybe to get to Thornhope next week. Or actually, whenever that group is together. Because the field trip is always a toss of the die which group we run. <laughs> we currently have 21 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to help support this illustrious rate of players and help support Locho players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or you can be a guest with us for an episode of Locho Players News. And this week, we have a featured comment. And Sans, what does Bragg say? Prague says, Hey, Lotro Players team, 
I heard your new player question this week on pipeweed farming. There is more to it than you might guess at first glance. Although the system has been simplified in some ways as the farming profession was streamlined, it can still take some doing to produce all the different types of pipeweed in the game due to the amount of crossbreeding that is required. I experimented with it last year to generate some stock of all the varieties, and it was a fun little experiment. You can get more details on episode 75 of Light the Beacons, if interested. Good luck! Brag, son of Balin. And the link is there. And we have a link in there, and yes, I completely forgot about the crossbreeding thing. I did too. Yeah. Because farming otherwise is just you plant the seeds and you get whatever you want now. <laughs> Except pipeweed. Except pipeweed, yes. And you can contact us by emailing us at podcast at lochaplayers.com. And you can also follow us at Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Locha Players at Locha Players, Arandis at Arandis, Pine Leaf at Pine Leaf Needles, Send Winda at Send Winda, and Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin. We have two live shows every week, every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News, and every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locha Players News. And you can join us for our live shows at com slash live and that is all for tonight and until next time this is Pilot Newells reminding you to skirmish responsibly.